Hi, this is a, a short little video on um, how to deal with um, quartic surfaces. So this question here is, um, given a surface by an equation, um, identify the type of surface and sketch it. Now the first thing I notice is that all the terms here are, are squared at most. And as soon as the terms are all squared at most, then it's a, a quartic surface. So in order to identify quartic surfaces, although you might recognise some standard forms and you might be able to pick it, um, I find the easiest way of approaching this thing are these sort of questions is to think of traces. And that's basically to take cross sections, so same thing, um, for different um, in different directions. So I, I want to consider trace in different directions. So for example, um, let's take cut. So if we um, so for traces when x is a fixed number. So basically these are slices imagining you're cutting um, parallel to the um, zy plane. So fixing values and you're going to get curves. So when you're cutting a surface along different cuts you can get a, some sort of curves. So in this case we're getting minus x0 so x0 would be some sort of constant plus 4y squared minus z squared equals 4. Now x0 is a constant. We're changing. Now when I, this is now um, reduced just down to a, a curve. Now being highly just quadratic it's going to be a, a conic so we need to just uh, change it enough to rec recognise the type. So I find the easiest is to put all the constants on one side. So 4y squared minus z squared equals 4 plus x0 squared. And as soon as I see the difference of two squares here I say, oh, that must be a hyperbola. Now, I should, we should make this a little bit more precise, just double check. So, this is a hyperbola. Now, so long, this is a hyperbola, so long as this side over here is not zero. Now, if it is zero, then you get a degenerate hyperbola, which ends up being just a, a intersection of two lines. So, you've got to make sure that's not zero. And if it is zero, that gives a little information. In this case, 4 plus x0 squared, well, x0 is just a number, so square root is going to make a positive, so it's never zero, so always, it's always hyperbola. So maybe we'll put it in brackets, always. And you can tell some information, so you can see the different hyperbolas um, that they're not a square one, so that the numbers at the front aren't quite the same, um, but they're hyperbolas, and that's probably the key information what we want at the moment. Next thing we want to trace is in different directions. So we just look at the top. Um, if we like z equals z naught, then we get something similar. We get minus x not x squared plus 4y squared minus z naught squared equals 4. And you can see it's almost pretty much the same as before. So put the constants all on one side, and just like we before, we're going to get a hyperbola. Now as soon as if traces in two different directions give you the same type of conic section, in this case both hyperbolas, um, then that gives you the name of, the, sur of the, su the surface. So since we've got hyperbolas in two different directions, we know we're going to get some sort of hyperboloid. Now often there's different types. Um, so for hyperboloids, um, you can get cones, um, one sheet or two sheets. Um, if you had a paraboloid, for example, you can have an elliptic or a hyperbolic one. So, the way to do these things is to do traces. If two directions are the same, that gives you the, the chief name of the surface. To work out the precise type, more, the more precise type, you can look trace in the other direction, which is what we'll do. So, we'll do a trace, so taking cross sections in the, the third direction. Why not? So, we're going to get minus x squared plus 4 a constant. Minus z squared equals 4. And again, like always, we're going to put the constant to one side. So you get minus x squared minus z squared equals 4 minus 4y naught squared. Um, we need to make a sum of squares in order to make an ellipse, so we get rid of the minus signs. So 4y naught squared minus 4. Now, as soon as we see this sum of squares here, we know it's going to be an ellipse, if anything. But we've got to be, we've got to be more careful here, and that's really important in this case. So it's an ellipse, 
um, so long as what's on the other side here is positive. Um, so you can get a degenerate case. So the degenerate case, so you get a point if the uh, right hand side is zero and you get nothing. Um, if four minus y squared minus four is less than zero. So let's consider the various cases. So um, a quick sketch, so four minus y squared minus four. So if we just draw a little sketch of that. This is the y naught scale and this is the values of it. Um, so that's going to be, it's going to, um, so if you factorise this you get, that's equal to zero plus or minus one and it's a nice little um, curve looking like that. So we can see that um, four minus y squared minus four is greater than zero either this way or here. So either when y naught is greater than one or y naught is less than minus one. It's equal to zero. Y naught is plus or minus one, and it's le and you get nothing if y naught is between minus one and one. So the the trace in the other direction, you're getting three possibilities. So you're getting basically we're getting ellipses with a, a lot of ellipses with a um, with two points and a big gap in the middle. So what does this correspond to? So with a hyperboloid. If you've got um, a continue, if all the traces are ellipses, like every single one of them, no points, no no gaps, whatever, it's a hyperboloid of one sheet. So it's all connected. If the hyperboloid shrinks to a point briefly, just one point, then you get a special case of a cone. If the hyperboloid has a gap in the middle, then there's two pieces to it. So this is therefore is a hyperboloid of two sheets. Um, and so for a hyperloid of two sheets, it's going to be two parts. Um, the useful thing to do is, you know, as soon as you know the type, just draw the rough shape. So a hyperloid of two sheets um, basically looks like a, a stalic a mite. So something like a hill at the bottom and a stalic tight. So something from above. And they're not quite reaching together. So they're basically two separate things. And they look and if you take cross sections, they're hyperbolas. And you see my other cross sections, which I've tried to draw here, are ellipses. So that's a classic shape. So what's useful would be to know what the central axis is here. Be useful to know what the center is. Be useful to know what the vertices are. Um, and that would be the, the key way of identifying. And again, um, we might want to put some, just to get some shape ideas, to put some other axes on. So that's the rough shape. I've drawn it without. As soon as I've drawn a hopple or two sheets shape, and I'll then I'm going to label it afterwards. So work at the centre of a conic section really requires you to complete the square. In this case, it wasn't re required. And then once you complete the square, just um, you can read off the answers. In this case, the centre is just going to since it's already completed, it's going to be x naught um, x equals go the top x equals zero, y equals zero, and z equals zero. So this, the centre, is just the origin for this simple case. For a hyperloid of two sheets, these two points here are basically, when you're taking cross sections in this this direction, is going to be when you get points. I, these two points we found before. So let's just work out what they are. So when y naught is plus or minus one, what are you going to get? You're going to get y four times by one minus four is zero. So that's when x squared plus y x squared plus z squared equals zero. So that implies that these points are x equals zero and y equals zero. And we've already worked out that y naught or the y value is either positive one or minus one. Um, and then you can say, well, these vertices, these vertices and this all on the same axis. So this axis here then corresponds to x equals 0 and z equals 0, or put it simply, um, this is the um, y-axis. So let's put a little y in that direction, that's the easiest way to look at the y-axis. And again, so what I've done is, I've worked out what the equation is, and I've got a whole sec, I recognise that's the y-axis. 
it doesn't always necessarily be a standard axis. And I find it easier to define the, to actually label the central axis, even if it isn't corresponding to x, y, or z, like given by an equation. And now I've got y, the y axis going through the middle here, I can add the other standard axes if I wanted to. So in this case, it's helpful. Um, so let's put the x axis going that direction and the z axis going in that direction. And so we've got the, the center set of axes. That's our um, rough shape of a hyperloid of two sheets. Uh, now, something I haven't captured very well in my picture um, is the fact that it's not a square hyperbola. So you might want to put some other labels down. So um, you need to label enough so people can understand what you're drawing, really. Um, so you might want to label one of these um, curves down the bottom, but this would be a rough thing. So vertices, center, um, central axis, I guess, is the, um, I think, pretty useful thing to do. So let's just try to see how to do that in Maple, because that might be also helpful. Um, so here's Maple here. So in order to draw a, whoops, a quartic surface, you go with plots at the moment. And we're going to do an implicit plot, but this time in 3D. And I want to put the, plot the curve. So the plot was minus x squared um, plus 4 times y y squared, from memory, minus z squared um, equals 4. And I want to plot it for some reason, range. So, um, although we've got an idea of what it looks like, I'm just going to make all the ranges from minus 4 to 4 seems reasonable. Um, you could try things. If that didn't work straight away, you could try the values and it gives you a plot for you. Um, in order to get some labels, what useful, you can do axes equals framed or boxed or something like that. Um, so here's so it is, and I'm just clicked on the curve and I'm just dragging it around. So I'll just drag around here. That's sort of how I drew it. It's hard to I don't know, 90. <laughs> so you can change the various angles. We'll type them up here. So that's better. So you can see the axis going up and down is the y-axis. Um, left and right is x and going in, which you did, can't see very well. Oh, here it is. There's the z going is depth in. And again, if we want to get the scalings right, we can do scaling equals constrained and you can see not really but um, you can see that cross sections oh, should be ellipses oh they're not no they're circles what am I doing so tell us a little lie um, the traces in this one so it's x squared plus y squared is a fixed number so only realising it looking at the graph that we can be more precise here. Ellipse is correct, but we can realise they're actually circles. Don't know why it didn't dawn on me earlier, but there you go. And so um, they are nice and circular sort of regions. So that's sort of how you can deal with quartic surfaces. I hope that helps. Please ask if you have any questions.